morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Today I'll be giving a presentation about POS systems, point of sale systems. Uh, I hope you enjoy or at least learn something. I did. Uh, so let's get started. What's a point of sale system? Anybody know? It's like a cash register, right? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much just a cash register. Point of sale system is an operating system that handles various day-to-day -day business tasks. So POS systems have made running businesses really easy and shopping even easier. So easy that Walmart and Kroger and pretty much everybody else is moving just to self-serve registers so they can save on labor costs. These are most often seen in retail environments or grocery stores, restaurants, stuff like that. But you're pretty much going to see them everywhere you go nowadays. So what can a POS system do? It can keep inventory, keep track of sales, keep track of employees, and process payment. And these are just a few of the things they can do, but they're probably the most likely that you're to see. Uh, they can be tailored to whatever you need for your business. So keeping inventory. POS systems can keep track of anything in your store. It can tell you how many items you have, how many you've sold, the prices of individual items. Uh, some POS systems even allow you to order stock or even like automatically order it once you run out of stuff. Uh, it's become a necessity for giant grocery stores like Walmart because how many people do you need to keep track of everything at Walmart? A lot of people. So, you know, if we didn't have this, then we'd run out of Fruity Pebbles, and I can't live without my Fruity Pebbles. So, uh, the next thing, keeping track of sales. So POS systems can keep track of costs and overhead and profits. And it can take anything into account from everyday expenses like paper towels, cleaning products, uh, shrink, which is pretty much lost through chain, transit, accidental damage, stuff like that, uh, to tracking how much a certain register makes or a department makes in total. Any any sort of analytics you could want. Any, anybody here worked at a grocery store? Okay, a lot of you. So, I'm not sure how it works at other grocery stores, but where I work, at the end of the day, we print off a POS report, and it's always pretty interesting to see how much money that register made in a day. Keeping track of employees. POS systems can make it easy to keep track of how long employees worked, how much their paycheck should be, and their scheduled times of work. So for stores that employ more than just a few people, maybe five to ten people on up, this is almost a necessity because it can be really difficult to keep track of everybody's times that they can work and when they want to work and it's just a mess unless you have POS systems. So you can schedule just the right number of people to have it once. If you have too many people, you're paying for extra labor for no reason. And if you have too few, then people will leave because it's taken too long to get through one. So POS systems can help you uh, schedule people, and uh, along with apps like Logile or Kronos, that'll let employees check their times on their phone from wherever so they don't have to call you every time they need to know what hours they work. Processing payment, this is really important. POS systems can process payment through credit, debit cards, cash, NFC technologies like Apple Pay, and etc. Uh, nowadays, it's nearly impossible to run a business without being able to accept credit cards, debit cards, and so on. And soon enough, we'll probably be moving to something like Apple Pay, or there's like the chip that you can get in your hand now, stuff like that. Uh, cash is becoming less and less preferred, and some places on the West Coast 
stop taking cash now. You have to pay with a card. So, luckily, now that POS systems can just be put on your phone, uh, people can keep up with that better now. So, if you run a small business like a hot dog stand, you can just open up the app on your phone and take a credit card. This is just a short video of a demonstration of the POS system. Uh, they can change, obviously. This one's for a bar, I think. But they can change depending on what you need. Hi, everyone. This is Kelsey from POS Nation. We're going to take a closer look at our restaurant POS system. This will be a brief overview of the hardware and software that make a complete system solution for your restaurant. We will run through a basic transaction, show table service features, modify items, and review reporting. You can see our POS home screen, which is ready to take a quick service or bar order. Every employee will be set up with their own login ID or swipe card for accountability and security. The first thing an employee would do to start their shift is punch in the time clock with their ID. Then from there, they can activate a cashier shift so that the drawer opens for cash sales. If you don't have a drawer at the POS station, a server bank will be tracked, which means an employee carries their own cash. Now that we're ready to take an order, we can start bringing up an item using the quick cash feature or select a different order type, such as bar tab, table service, takeout, or delivery. We can also set up as many custom order types as your restaurant needs. We will start with a simple dine-in order. We choose the dining table order type, which then takes you to a virtual layout of the table. From here, I can choose a table to start a new order or pick up an existing order to edit or close out. Now we can place an order and send it to the kitchen. As you can see, we have many size and modifier options to choose from. Your POS will be configured specifically for your menu, so all the options you see here are just examples. There's thousands of different ways the menu can be configured to meet your unique workflow. After the order has been entered, I can hit done to send that to the kitchen without taking payment. Otherwise, I can touch the payment key and complete the order while sending to the kitchen at the same time. Since this is a table service, the customers usually will not pay until after the meal is completed, so I'll hit done. We can then go back to the dine-in screen to recall or edit the order. You can see the open ticket we created. When I click on it, it brings the order back up. Now I will click the payment button to complete the order. From this screen, I can choose between all forms of payment. Split the ticket by item or split the individual items, add gratuity or add the order to a customer's account. I will go ahead and close this out to cash and choose the amount tendered. A lot of quick keys show up to select the amount paid. I'll select 80. The change due shows on the screen. Now we're done with the order. At the end of the day, after you've closed all of your tickets, entered tips for your credit card payments, and completed your cash store account, you can run your end of day reports. You can access reports from the back office of the POS system or from the web reporting online if you're not in the restaurant. You can run these reports for any day that you choose and for any time period. You can quickly see what's happened so far for the current shift or current day. You can review open check easily, sales versus labor analysis, who's currently clocked in, voice, sales history, and many other reports. The online reporting is going to be even more robust with the new reports being added regularly. This can be printed to a receipt printer or viewed on screen. As you can see, there's a lot of options available. As mentioned earlier, this is a very basic walkthrough of the restaurant system, and there's many additional options and features available. Just contact any of your POS Nation's product specialists to get your specific questions answered or for more detailed software demonstration. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. We look forward to working with you in the near future. Okay. So, any questions so far? No?
So now I want to get into the history of POS systems. Um, this was really interesting to see, and it kind of made me appreciate what we have now more because it seemed like it would really be a pain. So what, what did we have before we had like a cash register, just the most basic kind of cash register you can think of? So before POS systems and before the cash register, we had books and ledgers and all of your expenses and incomes had to be written out by hand and added together by an adding machine if you had them. They were incredibly expensive at the time. So, did anybody ever ever think about this when you were like checking out at Walmart or whatever? Like how how did this all work before cash registers? Anybody ever wonder that? Just me? Okay. Well, Everything had to be done manually, of course, and it was all just long math out on paper. You had to do every time, and on adding machines, you couldn't just do like something that's a 10 times 2. You had to add 10 twice because adding machines weren't advanced enough to do multiplication at the time. Um, you can only imagine how long this would take with however many people go in and out of a Walmart or whatever today. It would take a very long time. And there was a lot of room for error and uh, for people to steal from me. Which is why um, James Riddy invented the incorruptible cashier. So this is widely considered to be the first cash register. It only kept track of sales and the totals of those sales, but it it was it was the first. It was what everything after that came came from. Um, it didn't even have a cash drawer. It was just pretty much an adding machine. Uh, it wasn't very appreciated in its time, but it did go on to become the cash register and later on the POS system. So, the patents for the incorruptible cashier kind of changed hands a few times, and then the National Cash Register Company was founded, and some improvements came, and the cash register grew from a quirky invention to a, to a widespread essential part of pretty much any store. It, it got the receipt printer and the cash drawer and the mechanical calculator in a lot of cases. So after this though, nothing really happened with the cash register. Not much else was invented. Uh, they got the electric motor and I have a video, I think it's on the next slide, that shows what that would be for. So if you couldn't tell what just happened there, uh, he unplugged it after the first time. The first time he did it, he could just press a button and it did all the mechanics itself. And when he unplugged it, he had to crank it by hand. And then there's another one that's a bit more detailed.
it was it was really hard to find uh, really detailed videos on cash registers because for the most part when people got done with them they just kind of threw them out because better technology had come. And speaking of better technology, sooner or later we got computerization and modern cash registers got things like barcode scanners, thermal receipt printers, which were a lot faster, uh, touch screens, cash card readers, operating systems, and you know, computers have changed just about everything that we do today. Clocks, cash registers, pretty much anything. And it's, it's just made everything so much more easy and a lot easier. <laughs> But it's cash registers. So in conclusion, they've just revolutionized everything and changed our lives for the better. They've made shopping and running businesses fast, simple, and convenient. And we hardly ever think about it, but it's probably one of the more important things that's happened to let modern life become what it is sort of an infrastructure thing because if we didn't we weren't able to just go to the Walmart and get everything we needed for the week then life would be a little bit harder so it's kind of crazy that we're living in the future now because even just a hundred years ago who could have thought that we were gonna have something where you could just run your business with press of a button and uh, everything that goes with it, you know, like employees, profits, uh, costs. Okay. So, thank you, Plus Systems. I appreciate you. Anybody have any questions before I conclude? Uh, when it comes to the uh, the video that you were showing before, it was like the first video you show. I don't know if anybody else knows, but that sandwich was like eighty three dollars. Uh, I think what I think what she ordered was like oysters, and then added a lobster tail, and then like two Bacardi cokes, and like. Oh, okay, makes sense. On the first slide in the, in this presentation, somebody ordered a filet mignon, and then a Budweiser, to go with it. So, good examples. <clears throat> Anybody else? No? All right, thank you.